Tardigrades. Am I right? Nigh unkillable little buggers that'll long outlive humans when you're all put six feet underwater by the melting polar ice caps. They are beloved by the internet for their resilience as well as their cute little budgie bodies. And while you can find plenty of content about the extreme conditions these little guys can survive, I'm gonna dive a bit deeper into the most recent research into the molecular secrets that enable their near immortality. Before we get into that though, I have a pressing question. Does anyone else think it's kind of strange that tardigrades exist at all? Going back to Darwin, we know that a species environment selects for traits that are useful for their survival. The tardigrade had to have evolved in some kind of ecological niche. What kind of environments do tardigrades live in that force them to adapt this many resistances? Dante's Inferno? The answer is surprisingly pedestrian. While tardigrades are capable of living almost anywhere, they prefer to live near or around water. On lichens, mosses, leaves, beaches, etc. Certainly a far cry from the ninth circle of hell that freezes Satan. So how could such a peaceful, plain-looking environment give rise to one of the toughest organisms on the planet? At first glance, moss on a rock is possibly the most boring scene one could imagine. But on a micro scale, this environment can be incredibly harsh. Mosses and leaves are subject to being dried out. While larger organisms can just move to find water, at this scale, the tardigrade might have to travel insurmountably long distances to hydrate. Water ensures that all the important biological molecules within an organism are correctly folded and fully functional. Over time, this unstable environment forced the tardigrade to evolve mechanisms that protected its own molecules during dry times. These other resistances to extreme environments may have been a bit of a happy accident, as the mechanisms that may have originally helped the tardigrades survive drying out may have also been useful for surviving other stressors, too. First, let's take a look at the tardigrade at a macro scale. Upon exposure to extreme stress, the tardigrade curls up into itself, forming what is called a tun state. And according to 100% of scientists, this is freaking adorable. I mean, look at this little guy. He's in a little ball, like, like a little Sonic the Hedgehog. In this state, the tardigrade will survive whatever you throw at it, kind of like Sonic's iframes. While tucking yourself into a little ball is great for releasing pent-up emotion, it's not really known for its bioprotective properties. What's going on molecularly under the surface? For that, let's take a closer look at what kind of special molecules tardigrades make. The tardigrade may owe its extreme resistance to its many intrinsically disordered proteins. I'm about to get deep into some protein biochemistry. If you want to just skip to the recent tardigrade research, skip to this timestamp. This next section is dedicated to how bizarre these intrinsically disordered proteins are. At first glance, their existence may appear to be quite surprising, as we know that order in biological molecules is really, really important. If you were to condense all of molecular biology into a short sentence, it would be, when things bind, things happen. Cells are just bags of soup containing tons of jiggling molecules, all bumping into one another. Most of the time, when these molecules bump into one another, nothing happens. But proteins and enzymes have specific shapes. And when these molecules come together and fit into one another in just the right way, like puzzle pieces, biochemical reactions can occur. The more rigid and precisely shaped an enzyme is, the more specific it gets. This is really useful when you need a protein or an enzyme to do exactly one thing. Lactase is an enzyme that has a specific shape for the sugar lactose to fit in. When lactase binds lactose, the amino acids within the enzyme are aligned in just the right way to break lactose into glucose and galactose. This model is called the lock and key and is helpful for understanding how enzymes work in a simple way. We know now that proteins and enzymes don't necessarily have to be rigidly shaped. The enzyme hexokinase, for example, has a flexible pocket that can adjust its shape when sugars bind, inducing a fit. But intrinsically disordered proteins take flexibility to a whole nother level, and the tardigrade has a whole bunch of them that are so special they get their own fancy family name. Tardigrade Specific Disordered Proteins Why would such chaotic, disordered proteins with no obvious form or function evolve? Before we get into how these paradoxical proteins are able to help the tardigrade survive, let's first talk about how extreme environments affect these disordered proteins themselves. 
Disordered proteins, by the very fact that they have no defined structure, are resistant to destruction. Think of something with a defined structure, like a stock video of a television. Taking a hammer to it results in something that can no longer be called a television. Now think of something with a very loose structure, like clay. Taking a hammer to clay might deform and change the shape of the clay, but it's still clay. Flexibility makes proteins resistant to the elements. More concretely, we can think of heat as being a type of hammer. Raising the temperature of a protein raises its average kinetic energy. Raise the energy of the molecule enough and you start vibrating molecules so vigorously that the whole thing can fall apart. Raising the average energy of an intrinsically disordered protein is not a huge deal, as it never had that much structure to disrupt to begin with. The tardigrade evolved to live in areas where water was variable. The lack of water is another type of hammer. Many biological molecules are their most functional when surrounded by a shell of water. Water has a slight electric polarity, favorably binding amino acids, the building blocks of proteins, that also have charge polarity. Other amino acids that don't have charge polarity are happily on the inside of proteins, in the hydrophobic core. When water is removed from a system with proteins, the proteins are much more likely to turn inside out as the water-fearing amino acids on the inside no longer have as much water to hide away from on the outside. These water-fearing amino acids like binding one another, and sometimes that means binding the hydrophobic cores of other nearby proteins. This causes aggregation, a buildup of proteins binding proteins, causing them to crash out of happily being dissolved in water. This dramatic unfolding can be extremely destructive. Imagine being turned inside out. Yeah, it's the same for protein. Coming back from precipitation is not always possible when water is added into the system. So intrinsically disordered proteins are protected from the lack of water because again, they're quite happy to exist in all sorts of different shapes. It's kind of the ultimate Buddhist molecule. These intrinsically disordered proteins can take any punishment you dish out and it just runs off their backs like water. But sure, the tardigrade is filled with these ultra-resilient, mega-flexible proteins. While those proteins can survive the elements, how does that translate for the organism as a whole? Tardigrades still have organelles and DNA and a whole bunch of other non-disordered proteins to protect. We can finally begin to discuss how these disordered proteins help the tardigrades survive the elements. What kills organisms at this scale is a mass destruction of their proteins and or DNA. These disordered proteins, which have no set shape or function, are capable of reacting to changes in the elements. One class of these molecules are called the late embryogenesis abundant proteins, or LEAs for short. While the precise function of these proteins remain a mystery, we do know that plenty of organisms make these proteins in response to desiccation or being dried out. It's possible that these floating, flexible proteins with no defined structure might be able to non-specifically bind to the hydrophobic cores of proteins undergoing destruction by dehydration. You can imagine these Leia proteins as being chaperones preventing students from getting a little too handsy with one another during their graduation celebrations. More recent research has shown a light on one particular tardigrade-specific protein, Cas8. Upon desiccation, these disordered proteins begin to form fibers. Over time and drying out, these fibers form a mesh that eventually forms a gel. Researchers aren't really sure how this gel protects the tardigrade, but they have a very interesting hypothesis. Each of these Cas8 proteins has a disordered tail that sticks into the inside of the gel structure. This tail consists of amino acids that have charge polarity, kind of like water. This might suggest that in times when water is rare, that the gel itself produces a water-like environment, helping to preserve protein shape and function. If it's true that this protein gel could act like a temporary water environment, this might also explain how the tardigrade survives being frozen. Water expands as it freezes, ripping apart organic matter. If the tardigrade can eject nearly all of its water and protect itself by making this gel, that might just explain how they can get away with surviving at near absolute zero. One potential application for the cast proteins in human hands is the development of dry vaccines. As we might remember from our not too distant pandemic, shipping and storage of vaccines can be quite expensive and makes vaccine accessibility problematic. 
Researchers are figuring out ways to leverage the Cas protein's extreme tolerance to severe conditions to protect bioactive molecules like vaccines from the environment, potentially allowing us to tackle our next pandemic with greater grace and ease. There's so much more to talk about with tardigrades. I haven't even gotten to how tardigrades revive themselves after these severe conditions, or how tardigrades are able to survive radiation levels that would destroy us. If you love hearing about tardigrades and want to hear more, please like, subscribe, and perhaps most importantly of all, comment. I can't read your minds. Let me know if you want more. Thanks for watching.